In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions from our audience, just like you. Now, if you want to ask us a question that we can answer in an episode, go to our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media, mm. post your question underneath the qua meme, and if we like it, we'll pick it and we'll answer it for you. This episode um, was just for you, by the way. <laughs> and then uh, in the beginning of the episode, we start out by having fun conversation. We talk about things that are in the news. Uh, I tend to bring up studies, so we could talk about you know scientific studies. We talk about our sponsors. Here's what we talked about in this episode. We started by talking about the Cybertruck from Tesla. I think it's going to be a huge success, uh, but Adam and Justin think it's ugly. It's a bunch of Doritos and uh, glued this together. Is, we'll see how well this episode ages and who turns out to be right. Mm. Uh, then we talked about the 82-year-old grandma bodybuilder who beat the crap out of an intruder. Go granny! She actually smashed a table on him. That's pretty awesome. Then we talked about one of our new sponsors, Magic Spoon. This 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 is crazy now. Okay, so this is like a kids cereal company. Mm. You may be thinking, why the heck is Mind Pump working with them? Yeah, here's why. It's not Captain Crunch. It's legit high protein from good sources like whey protein. It's got phenomenal macros and it tastes amazing. We think this company is going to explode. One normal serving, let's say two cups of cereal, it's over 30 grams of high quality protein. That's not even including the milk. Uh, that you put your cereal in. And so, it tastes amazing, Sal. So we have a discount for you. Here's what you do. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. The discount will be automatically applied. You'll get free shipping, and there's a 100% happiness guarantee. It means that you'll get a refund uh, if you don't like it. No questions asked. Then we talked about the documentary on Bikram. We talked about that again because Justin and Adam watched it now. That dude's a little crazy. We talked about uh, a new fitness trend that uh, is crazy called perineum sunning. This is where you lay on your back naked, spread your butt cheeks, and expose your butthole to the sun. Are there benefits to it? And who's really doing this? Or do these people just want to lay naked, spreading their butt cheeks, uh, and making up excuses to do it? Mm. Then we talked about cow VR. That's right. They're giving cows experiences with virtual reality to increase their milk production. Adam is actually a uh, cow expert, so he got to give us his input. They're probably playing Mario Kart. (laughs) Then we talked about macular degeneration and how scientists think that the rate of macular degeneration in in the younger population as they get older is going to start to explode because of our exposure to blue light that comes off of electronics. And we speculated that uh, it's probably going to become mandatory at tent companies to wear blue light blocking glasses. Now, our favorite brand of blue light blocking glasses is Felix Grey. These glasses look good, and they don't change the color and tint of what you're looking at like other brands. Uh, Now, we have a hookup for you. If you go to Felix Grey Glasses, Felix is spelled F-E-L-I-X, Grey is G-R-A-Y, glasses.com forward slash mind pump, you can take advantage of their Black Friday Cyber Monday sale, which started uh, this month on the 25th and ends on the 4th of December, which is 15% off site wide. Then I brought up a, a, a article I read that the that talked about how there were nine species of humans at one point, and it looks like uh, we killed them all. We won. Kind of crazy. Um, then we get into the fitness portion of the episode. This is where we answer the questions. The first question, this person wants to know, how many seconds is too long to rest between reps to get a few more? So some most people will do their reps one after another, but some people are talking about how you do a rep, and then when you get fatigued, you rest a little longer, like five or 10 seconds, then do some more. So we talk about the benefits and detriments of doing that. The next question, this person wants to know uh, if drop sets or strip sets are useful for the beginner or intermediate lifter. So this is where you lift a weight for as much as you can, drop it, immediately go to a lighter weight and do more reps. Strip it down. Uh, the next question, um, this person wants to know what we would consider to be an overall healthy and balanced individual. And the final question, This person wants to know what our opinion is on yoga. Uh, So what we think about yoga, its benefits, and its drawbacks. Also, if you're listening to this episode when it first gets released, you are lucky you're catching our biggest sale of the year in its final hours. It's the Mind Pump Black Friday sale. Ready for this? 50% off everything. Every program, all of our guides and all of our mods, except for Maps Powerlift, is 50 percent off. Here's what you do. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code BLACKFRIDAY50. So that's B-L-A-C-K-F-R-I-D-A-Y-5-0, no space for that discount. But that's not all. Mm. We're also offering an additional 25% off 
all of our bundles. Now, bundles are where we take multiple maps programs and put them together based off of different goals. Like if your goal is maximum fat loss or your goal is maximum muscle building or you're somebody that travels a lot, we take our maps programs that are appropriate, put them together, we discount them over 30% off retail, and right now for Black Friday, we take an additional 25% off. Mm. For that sale, use the code BFBUNDLES, and that's also found at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Yeah, wait till the wait till we're recording before you guys start this. Con- are, are we on now, Doug? Yeah. We are. Uh, all right. Just, so why don't you just talk about what you're saying? <laughs> you're, why don't you say that again? We're talking about your your <laughs> your cider no, I, truck. I was just thinking about it. I was just like, you know, what I've always wanted is a fucking triangle truck. You're so stupid. Hey, so I, I would I say a lot keep, more triangles. You guys keep please. talking shit. I would say said nobody at all, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but apparently- yeah. I want it to look like a bunch of wheat thins. You apparently know, like almost 200,000 people disagree with us. Is Bro. That, is that where we're at? They, they have pre-sold over $10 billion worth of trucks. Now, I know what you're going to say, oh, that's, those are $100 deposits and they're projecting or whatever. But did they, they did Wait. the same thing. So that's a hundred. Wait, because there's two hundred and fifty thousand uh, pre-orders is what I saw. Yes, yeah. which 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 when okay. they come through because they're all reserved. When they come through, it's over ten billion dollars. Okay. Uh, I'm not that impressed though. Still with that number. Uh, I well, know you're so impressed with that number, but Chevy and Ford do a hundred thousand trucks every single month. That's month not of- fair. You can't compare. Tesla to Chevy and Ford. I mean, you, no, yeah. you can't do that. You got to no, compare them to what they it's did before. It's brand new. And uh, as far as the pre orders are concerned, when they did the Tesla Model 3, the few, first few days they had $13 billion in pre order sales, and almost all of them came through. It's also a launch. Come on, guy. You, you know, know you know that. You're no in the marketing. Business, you're, you're in the business of launching yeah, shit. No, no. No marketing. Okay. Well, that's, everybody knows Tesla, though. Come no on. marketing. Come on. He None was, at all. He was, okay. No traditional marketing, yeah. but it got marketed, brother. Dude, We're yeah. talking about it. Yeah, that it's being marketed. Was right the marketing? It was how, all over yeah. TV. How much money do you think it does it, companies it, spend on marketing when they launch a new car? Uh, yeah. Probably a ton. Hundreds of millions of dollars. He did none of that. He did a launch on video. Nobody saw it before. The argument that. isn't that it's not profitable. Okay. The argument is not that it's not. It's a it's yeah. a, a lame truck, bro. No lame. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. lame. And dude. the and the two hundred thousand people that bought it, uh, uh, more than uh, half of them are probably from the Silicon Valley, are not from the Midwest. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, do the math. That's so prob- what? That's probably all the husbands of the guys that drive Prius. Oh. <laughs> 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 that's God. that's who that's who ordered that truck. Oh my God! Uh, that's who, I mean, that's no. we'll see. Talk to me Apparently after that's a large six, demographic. Here's, talk to me six months Apparently. from now, or after everybody. Here's my drives yeah. prediction. Here's my prediction. It's going to change the truck industry in some fundamental but subtle ways. First off, <laughs> this thing is but subtle. Yeah. Yes, this is. It goes zero to sixty in two point nine seconds. Okay, cool. it can tow fourteen thousand pounds. It has a payload uh, capacity of 3,500 pounds, over a 500-mile rate uh, uh, distance on one charge. It's got 100 cubic feet of enclosed bed area, which is insane. Mm. And it's enclosed. It can cover itself up. Wow. It seats six. It's got the adaptive air suspension. And you can get the, the beginning model for under 40 grand. Yeah, yeah but did Bob Seger write a song you know, for it? <laughs> no. Whoa, like a rock. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think dude. so. Hey, I don't think so. Bro, that's a, it's, it's extremely successful launch. Watch what happens, dude. It's an Watch ugly truck. What? It's yeah, well, maybe you guys don't want it. Yeah, I mean, and that I, don't, I mean, here I, uh, you know, some people are extremely the paper airplane. Some with tires. people are extremely loyal to like like brands, and uh, to to an extent, I kind of am. But then I'm also the same guy too. I mean, I've, the last two trucks I had before were Chevy, and I I switched to GMC this this last uh, this last purchase that I made because I don't like the way Bro, the you're the one that I don't like to, the new Chevy you used to like say in high school you used to wear freaking orange jackets and weird shit to be different what? <laughs> this is a different truck <laughs> be, you know what I'm saying be different you don't want to be like everybody else and get a fucking that's know. the message be different you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, no. truck dude people. it's got some crazy uh, add, uh, things that you can add on like the, the, the quad that comes with that you can get uh, also after you buy the truck and then it's got this like yeah. This tent that you can Super attach to the back. Super useful for all the people yeah. in what San Francisco, yeah. right? Bro. Yeah. Was that like a tortilla chip? <laughs> actually, hold on a second. All the quads you see yeah. driving around actually, San Francisco <laughs> and San Jose. Hold, hold on a second. I'm about to, yeah. to it'll, drop some. It'll sit in a living room like mine. I'm about to drop some clown on you guys. Ooh. What percentage of truck owners do you think actually use their trucks in America 
for hard work on farms and shit like that? Oh, that's a good question. Right. Most people own, like you clowns, you got your six inches <laughs> left. Where the fuck do you go with your truck? <laughs> uh, Eight inches, sorry. Let's see. I go to the dump all let's the time, Let's see here. Uh, Pismo let's out try. in the dunes, yeah. uh, up to Tahoe to go snowboarding. Yeah, uh, yeah I use the yeah. fuck bro, out of my truck, I can truck, drive bro. my, my uh, all-wheel drive in the same place. I every weekend. Shut oh, up. Yeah. You, guys, yeah. you guys drive your trucks around here all the time. Hey, we'll see about that when we go to Tahoe. We'll see if you're- see post more selfies. See if you're fucking all-wheel drive car. I'm doing manly things. Look at me. Yeah. I, I just forget to no, do that. No, but honestly, most people buy trucks in America. They're the top, the top selling vehicle in America is a truck more than any other car. Most of these people don't use the trucks for truck activities, right? They use them just as a car. Maybe. I mean, you just made that comment to me, which was stupid because I used the shit out of my ah, truck. Barely. Not barely. Yeah. No, not barely. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've, I've had it for what four years. In the last ten years, I've had season passes up to the fucking snow. Yeah. So do the math. I'm doing probably twenty to thirty visits every single winter up to there. I've got an ATV that I pull and have sand paddles. So I go out on the beach. You ever try and drive your? See how your car does on the fucking Hold sand? Hold on a second. You never. When's the last time you used your ATV yeah, in the sand? I've got it. Yeah, my ATV's been sitting in my living room, and you know that. <laughs> And, but you also, I'm, what I'm telling you, sore subject, Sal. I use the shit out of my yeah. truck. No, dude. but mo th this is true though. Most people buy trucks because they like them. They like the way they look. That's why trucks now are the interiors are so nice. They have like a lot. You're the oh, they're super spacious. Yeah, you don't need the SUV anymore. You just get the truck and the truck dude, bed because you got enough space. That's it. And the truck market is not uh, like what we used to think it was. It's very different now. Uh, people just like trucks. I think that's a naive statement coming from somebody who lives in a fucking bubble. Yeah. We live in California yeah. in the Silicon Valley. You are yeah. so disconnected yeah. from the rest of the yeah. United States. Yeah. We I want to see yeah, yeah middle true. America driving these things around. I Probably, do. Well, I don't think you'll see a lot of Teslas at all in middle America anyway. Yeah. I mean, have you been to other states? Like, I know, you, you don't see any. Yeah. No, you drive around San Jose or Oh, Saratoga. I would love to see how many people that bought this truck that were not from L.A., from L.A. to San, San Francisco right. area. You're I'm right. willing to bet that at least 80% of those purchases came from yeah, that. All no, up and that, down California. No, yeah. you're right, because the, the charging stations are, you know, a lot of them are concentrated in these big urban areas. And I've been to other states, and I remember when I drove uh, through, uh, you know, through Yellowstone and through all the states around there, I didn't see a single Tesla, yeah. which when I'm in, this is no joke, if you don't live in California or especially the Bay Area, I will not, I, I cannot go through a day and not see at least five, mm -hmm. at least five Teslas. Yeah, they're everywhere. So that's true. You're right. And I don't think they're going to have the same penetration as Ford and Chevy, but this is going to be a success. Yeah. It's funny because it's funny to talk about because I really am pulling for Tesla as a company, but I just, I, I can't get behind this, this, this design, dude. I really? You like Star Wars. Looks like it belongs to Star Wars. I do, but Wars. like, you know, like that's fantasy, I bet bro. If they did it, if they <laughs> it's did. not reality. Shut up, dude. Yeah. If they did a launch with Star Wars, you would have totally yeah. I'm like driving a Millennium Falcon fucking <laughs> car. That's hilarious. No, I'm not doing that. That'd be so awesome. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. got my dog, like in Chewbacca. So I'm with me. you, Justin, on that. Like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of. I mean, I've been sharing his tweets just in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I'm a fan of Elon Musk. I'm a, fa a fan of Tesla. Uh, I think it's pretty cool that they they've created something that uh, competes as far as torque and horsepower and yeah. towing capability as the Fords and Chevys and Dodges that are out there. Yeah, that's all but badass. I, but, but I'm also I I like design. Dude, I like the way some design, and I think it looks like a fourth grader designed did, it. Did you see the uh, the challenge between Ford and Tesla? Okay, so they they're on round two now, right? Yeah. Like so so they so Tesla initially, which is brilliant. So you know, just a little history. Whenever you do challenge competitions with another brand, you tend to increase the sales of both brands mm -hmm. because you, you make people feel like they yeah, have the to pick. Pepsi thing. Exactly. Yeah. So what Tesla did, what, what he did, which is brilliant, is he did a, a video where it was a towing battle with a Ford F-150 and the Cybertruck, and the Cybertruck pulled the F-150 uphill while the, the F-150 was even trying to go. It, it couldn't compete. Now, Ford came back and said, that's not fair. You guys have a heavier truck. We got to have better tires and that. So Ford came back and said, "Let's do this again. We'll pick our truck." And and well, they get like a dually, like 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 fifteen hundred truck dude, or something. Well, well, Elon agreed. Now this is the best free publicity you could ever ask for. Yeah, see, and that's crazy. You, the, tactics like that are again. You said there's no marketing. This is great marketing right there. They didn't oh, spend yeah. money on it. The great marketing, and and, no, and when you when you understand physics, if you marketing. have a truck that outweighs by five hundred to a thousand pounds, that sure. more, that has way more advantage sure. just in that alone. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's like a a two hundred pound man playing with a, a hundred pound yeah. kid, and yeah. who's going to win in tug of war? Well, all day long. also there's also the science of electric engines. Uh, low end torque electric engines are 
they're superior just mm-hmm. in, in pure efficiency. You hit the pedal d- to go, and it's instant it's almost, power. Yeah, it, it, immediate. A gas engine needs to generate some energy through the you know through the, the combustion process or whatever. So when it comes to towing. Um, or just low end torque. Electric engines are superior. They're always the downfall of electric engines has always been the the capacity to like. Okay, they say it's 500 miles uh, in terms of how much distance they can do with one charge on their top model. What does that turn into when you're actually towing heavy weight and you've got a high, heavy payload? Probably not 500, right? Who knows? And you don't want to. I'm sure you don't want to get stuck with a with a car. And not be able to charge it within you know five seconds. Like right. Yeah. Well, the juice are you running? The, yeah. the real test will be when when we act, people get out and you use them, and everybody uses them for their daily uses. Yeah. That's when uh, we're gonna yeah. when someone tries to load it up and they realize the bed is you know six inches shorter or smaller, and the average things you're used to throwing yeah. in the back of your truck doesn't, doesn't fit, fit lumber in there very well. Right. That, this it's is kind of when you you actually do drive it off off road and you're herding cattle with it. If actually somebody who actually has cattle would even think about buying like this truck, but. You're gonna when we start seeing that, that's when we'll know. Like the, all the, all the tests and all the fucking market. I mean, everybody when they launch a vehicle, is going to present bro, it in the best light. Bro, the and, thing about Tesla that's and I said this before that's interesting is it it people treat it like a tech company. They don't treat it like a like a car company. So it's like think about a tech company when a new device comes out in tech. It's about how cool the features are. Mm-hmm. Cars typically aren't like that. People are right. like, oh, is it a cool looking car? Or whatever. Tesla can get away with. A lot of they can get away with a weird looking truck. Like if Ford released an electric truck that looked like that, they would have died. Oh, they got lambasted. But because yeah. it's Tesla and everybody treats it like this tech company, it's fucking cool. So it's really interesting to see them kind of break all the rules and still succeed. And you know what? Tesla sales, as people have used their cars, have gotten better. But the stock even gets traded like a, like a tech company. So you see it bounce up and down. And well, it's I mean, interesting. It, it, it you know in his defense, if if you believe that we're in the next, you know, there's people, and I believe Elon Musk believes this, then the next decade that the the landscape of uh, transportation is going to completely be, you know, changed. Yeah. And if you're if you've built a, a car that you can do upgrades virtually, uh, like theirs, and I'm sure the platform would would be able to connect to whatever self automating, uh, you know, software that comes out in the future. So if you believe in that, uh, the direction he's going is, is Bro, smart so- and, and is the future and is he will win the long game potentially. Uh, I just think that he missed the mark Dude. on the design of this one. That's yeah, all. a lot of people are saying that. But again, it's and I have a, a, a client who used to work. Uh, he was a very high up for Tesla. You guys know that these cars upgrade like you upgrade your yeah, cell phone or computer. I told you that. That's what I mean by they can they they literally like yeah, a, a recall or something update. comes out. They they do an update on your automatic through yeah. Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. No, my buddy's literally like, oh, uh, we just sent out an update today that that lowers everybody's zero to sixty time by 0.3 seconds. Right. Or we just yeah, sent no, it, so right. we you know did, what I mean. We, it's, we it's just did an update cool. up, and now you you got, you're better. Your car's more efficient. You just saved X amount of you know. It's miles. crazy. Yeah, no. That, and if you think that self driving cars are the future, which I think they 100% are. I'd place, I bet, I'd make that bet all day long. Their gas stations are going to be fucking obsolete because right now gas stations are designed for the us, for the consumer to park our. When when it's a bunch of uh, self driving cars, they're all going to be electric. They're all going to drive. At the end of the day, they're going to drive to their 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 own charging station. Mm-hmm. So it's bro, it's going to be electric. It's just it's just far more convenient. I, I it find it, it it's it's interesting to me because when you when you watch like the futuristic you know movies like Tron and shit like that, and, and you see like <laughs> yeah. vehicles like this in it. It never appealed to me. Like I never watched those futuristic movies. And go like, oh, that's a cool looking yeah, car. Yeah, it looks spacey. And they always weird. have like these weird, like these coats with like really big shoulders. You know, they go <laughs> way too far out. I'm like, nobody's gonna wear that. I feel shit. like it, yeah. We I, I feel like we should get two hundred fifty thousand like that. people that will. <laughs> Everybody yeah. like you assholes. Yeah. Now you're like creating a new standard for Every, people to wear. Everybody's wearing stuff. shiny clothes. Yeah. yeah. It's always, you know what I mean? it's right. Like, like remember Bill and Ted's where they're all like up there, like be excellent, and then they have like this like ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous regalia on, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. No, that's 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 totally true. I don't know. And so man, I feel like Elon kind of he he lives in fantasy land like that yeah. a little bit. It's and like so the Jetsons. That's yeah. where the where the motivation of these designs come well, from. And, and there obviously is. I mean, there's at least two hundred thousand people. He said Blade Runner was the inspiration. If you guys have seen the original yes, Blade yeah, Runner, it. it does look like that. Here's another interesting question: Is do you think that they would do as well as they do if Elon wasn't the CEO or if something happened? Definitely not. No, I think there's a lot of that. 
that. Like he's such a. There's so many people that believe in him. Yes, that's what it is. That really, hundred percent. It's that. Yes. there's so many people that believe in him and are fans of him that it's like yeah. half of those. I be, I would, you know, uh, half of those people are probably purchasing just out of support Dude, of what he's doing. He's just a great American hero. You know, entrepreneur, innovator. He's like the real life kind of Tony Stark, kind of weird, yeah. super smart. Does a bunch of crazy shit. I think uh, a big part of their success is because it's him, dude. Anything he yeah. does, people agreed, are, agreed. You know what I mean? And anyway, very interesting. Which just gives you the false perception of yeah. the actual how cool the truck yeah, is, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you're actually just guy who built proving cool, our point. Like nobody nobody ran out and uh, bought a Ford because who the CEO of Ford is, right? You don't even know who the Ford CEO is. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's Ford, like Ford Raptor comes out and you don't yeah. go like, oh, it's I like who is the CEO of Ford? Doug. It's like I hate Kiss, but you know, like for real true Kiss fans, they did a disco album. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This is his disco album to yeah, me. Maybe. We'll, we'll see what happens. James Hackett. Yeah, nobody uh, goes, yeah. hey, I bought a Ford Raptor because I believe in what James Hackett yeah, is nobody doing. Cares about nobody cares No, it's because the truck James is fucking Hackett. badass. Yeah, that's true. You know, so that's my guy. There's definitely a lot of people that bought this truck because they're big Elon fans. Well, and hey, don't be surprised if uh, in a couple years I, I end up rolling up with a space truck. Uh, <laughs> speaking you know of saying? badass, did you guys see uh, in the news there's this lady in New York. Uh, she's 82 years old. Old. And she's like a bodybuilder. I guess she's done a couple powerlifting meets or whatever. But some like like intruder, home intruder, was like knocking on the door and then kicks like the door open and breaks it open. She hears all the commotion, runs down there and like just makes a decision that oh, I'm gonna grab this table and just bash him to smithereens with it. What? Yeah. Yeah, she just like literally takes this table, smashes it over this guy, and I guess uh, through all the commotion, the guy falls down, and then she like jumps on top of him to to pummel him until the cops get there. Wait a minute, she she picked up a table, a table, and dude, blasted him and, with the and table, literally smashed the table like why in though? Half. What, what was the reason why he because he in. broke it into to her home and was trying to rob her. Oh, shit. eighty two years old, caught on film. Uh, no, this was like recounted, and, and oh, okay. the, the cops got there within like five, ten minutes, so, like, she was, uh, she she was, like, still, like, kicking them and doing all kinds of dude, stuff. Dude, how, am, oh, there it is. Look at her. She's a badass. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's look at her guns. Dude, like, he had to be taken, he like, had That's to, somebody's grandma beating the shit out of He had uh, to be taken to the hospital. Yeah. You, wow. wow. Dude, imagine the, the, the embarrassment this fucking guy is going to have in jail. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He's oh, going he to gonna get roasted in he's jail. He's going to go to jail yeah. and he's got his ass kicked by an 82-year-old lady. <laughs> What a what a testament though too to like lifting weights deep into your right. Uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Nothing. I mean that's all the sales we need. Like, come on, let's get people lifting weights. Look at yeah. <laughs> you know that's the thing people always ask about. Like, oh, when I get older, you know, my strength declines or whatever. Let me tell you something. You take an 82 year old that l has lifted weights for decades and you put them up against or compare them to anybody in that age category, and it's such a big difference. It you might as well be talking about two different species almost. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like the average eight. Think about it this way: the average 82 year old could not only not lift up a table, but probably the the average 82 year old might have difficulty walking for a mile without assistance. Right. Here you have an 82 year old lady whooping who the shit out of somebody, beat yeah. the crap out of a man. No, you're not going to come in here and steal my shit. Wow, that's so sorry. Awesome. <laughs> Smash, dude. You know, I'll tell you what's uh, what's super annoying though right now to me uh, is my dairy intolerance. Annoyed. Uh, you know why it's annoying the shit out of me? Why? Because you're we, watching me eat all the cereal. We just started our. <laughs> oh, you're gonna talk about them, right? Yeah, now. dude. We just started dude. our uh, first sponsorship uh, commercial or whatever with Magic Spoon, and the macros on this thing are. Uh, I don't know how they do it, bro. It's. I mean, it's got dairy protein, so I can't eat it. My kids love it, but I, oh, I love it, dude. We we got connected with them first uh, with Max Lugavere. So heard about it with Max. Uh, Max is a really good friend of ours, uh, and you know called us right away after because we sent him a message like, "Hey, what's this magic spoon?" We were looking at the macros. Called us right away and was like, "Holy shit." I'll have some sent over to you guys. I'll introduce you to the company. It's unbelievable. They've only been in business for about four, this at this time was four months and they're exploding. And it seemed like one of those too good to be true because I've tasted like cereals before that, yeah. you know, are quote unquote protein cereals. And they're all gross. Yeah, they're gross. And and then the macros are really whack. They just they they just adjust it by the serving size to make you think that you're getting. Yeah, they so, say a high protein, but it's like six grams like, of protein. Like a, mm -hmm. a typical like, you know, average bowl of cereal, like a, not a massive bowl, like an average bowl of cereal is about two cups of cereal. So when you actually have two cups of cereal of this stuff, you're oh. getting 36 grams of protein. And that's not including the milk. And only 300 something calories. Yeah. So yeah. with milk, it's so it's like a high protein meal and it tastes 
yeah. fucking bomb. Which also makes my away. wife and I celebrate uh, with my youngest, who is just like so carb driven. You well, know? It, it's like, I haven't had cereal for like a decade, dude. And we were, oh. I was so pumped to have yeah. this. Well, yeah. dude, look at the macros. Watch right? some Saturday morning cartoons, dude. So three quarters of a cup. So this is just. So you talked about two two cups, yeah, which is no, normal. Nobody eats three quarters of a cup. But let's look at just three quarters of a cup, which is a tiny serving. Yeah. It, look how balanced it is. Twelve grams of protein, eight grams of carbs. There's only there's zero grams of sugar, six grams of fat. Look at the ingredients. That the protein blend is milk protein isolate, whey protein isolate. Then it's coconut oil, tapioca flour. They have a sweetener blend, which is stevia, monk fruit, allulose. There's chicory root fiber. And then this one's a chocolate one. So it's got cocoa powder and then salt. Yeah. Like, and the macros are amazing. Like they, they, and they, they, like you said, it tastes like kids cereal. It's yeah. so good. And, and I, I literally sent out boxes to the, for the holidays to all my family. For the first time, I, I feel like we have a product that we're working with that even like my non-fitness, yeah, non-fitness people are like cool with it. Yes. So, and all of them, everybody loves it. Everybody yeah. loves it. I, you know where I see this exploding? Exploding bodybuilding. Yes. Oh, wait, just wait. The body one. The bodybuilding community oh, hasn't even got a whole. It's only this company's only been around. It's exploding. It's only been around for like five, five, six months. We now. tried to buy. We tried to buy yeah, we shares, missed. We missed. which we missed. There was an investment opportunity. Thanks, Max, for telling us late in the game. But once we tried it, we're like, I want to buy. Well, and this, this is just nice up. to have a, an option. I told you guys about like, like you know, vacation cereal with my kids. They're always like, you know, asking, when again, can we have vacation cereal? Because <laughs> yeah. it's like the little, the only time and allow, you know, cocoa puffs or whatever, you know, bullshit that they want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this, oh, this makes it so much better. It's like I don't have to, like, I don't have to, like, just, just so give them some they, they, garbage. They, currently, right they have four flavors right now. Do you guys have a favorite flavor right now? Yeah, the fruity one, the yeah, one that's like fruity. So Cinnamon for me. Oh, you like the, so I, I like love this. The cinnamon. I mean, I I like them all, and it's nice to kind of get like the variety box where you get one of each that they send because they ship it ships directly to your house, which is rad too. I, I love that. That's mm -hmm. you know so convenient, uh, and I do like all of them. I would say the cocoa is my least favorite. Then the yeah. uh, the pla what's the plain vanilla one? Yeah, there's vanilla. There's the, the fruit there's loop blueberry now, and there's oh, also, there's blueberry. Yeah, there's blueberry, and one. then there's also um, the pumpkin spice one. This oh, so is they the have holiday six, one. So they have six flavors then, because yeah. there was only four. The last those are the I latest had. ones. Oh shit! But I yeah, flavors. I like the cinnamon one because it reminds me I was like a cinnamon toast crunch guy. Yeah, except so, you don't get diabetes by eating this one. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Anyway, hey, I saw. Uh, I I've, I've turned on last night. I only got about halfway through because Katrina and I were working on some things, uh, but I did watch quite a bit. Um, the show, the documentary you brought up the other night, uh, the other day, Bikram. Oh, damn. oh, yeah. I watched that with Courtney last night too. Oh, what you did? did? What did you guys did. think? Oh man, it's you know what? Like I, I honestly, this is why we do what we do. Is what I feel like. I just feel like there's so many people out there that need help and, and are, you know, willing to just listen to somebody that's going to make them feel better. And the thing about these practices is they, they do hold weight. Like they're, they're legit practices that will help, you know, people out there, but then they're being led by this total douchebag. It's it, when I watch stuff like that, I I'm, I'm in awe of the, the, how, like the spell that people like him, cult leaders do this. <clears throat> Uh, world leaders do this, you know, nation leaders. Adolf Hitler did this. Like, they have this ability to compel people to do what they want, even when it's against their own normal, logical reasoning. Well, when you talk about... I actually just did an interview where I, I was talking about a similar topic to this, and that's, you know, when you, when you change somebody uh, physically, mentally, spiritually... And then you add in the fact that uh, you have a lot of charisma too. I mean, that's such a powerful combination and to a fault, right? Like people do this all the time. This is what I was talking about in the interview is that they were asking my, my thoughts on uh, training modalities and diet, what I think about mm -hmm. diets. And then I said, it's all bullshit, you know, and, and it's people, what ends up happening is somebody gravitates towards some sort of a modality like yoga and fucking they needed it you know they they have all they have hip pain they have back pain they got all this issue they're, they're broken Come yeah in. They're, they're broken and you enter in this class and this guy makes it funny and enjoyable and engaging mm -hmm. and and on top of it he's fucking good at his craft and a lot of what they say is right right and what he says and what he's teaching you as far as the philosophy behind the yoga is incredible and it changes your life and that just makes people fucking 
they everything else doesn't matter yeah. anymore. I believe whatever this person just says. Turn a blind eye to all these like red flags everywhere. And we see this across all modalities in fitness. How many times have you had a client who tells you what they need for their body because at one point in their life they trained a certain way, they ate a certain way, and it gave them this amazing results well, and they identify so much well, with it. Well, there's this there's this the psychological phenomena that happens with us, and it was probably a, a product of evolution where we kind of create these shortcuts where if somebody does something exceptionally well, we tend to assume that they do everything exceptionally well and that they're good people. Yeah. Right. So like you have an athlete who's an amazing athlete and you hear something bad about them and you almost you don't want to believe it. You think, oh, that can't be true. Right. Michael Jordan's such a great guy, or so and so such a great person. Yeah. Or you see an actor. Yeah, Bill Cosby who, loves Bill Cosby's pudding. like, yeah. or Michael Jackson. There's still people like Michael Jackson has fans still, even though he did what he did, and they probably. Oh, admit there's still people he, in denial. Of uh, yeah, of course. For it's, sure. It's crazy to me. And so it's, it's interesting. It's like if you're born with that level of charisma and you're able to communicate great information, you have a powerful tool. And it's your responsibility to use it for good. Now, the problem is, is that people who have the ability to communicate that way and have that charisma, oftentimes it comes with a healthy dose of narcissism. And here's the thing about narcissism. We learned this when we interviewed that psychologist years ago, that people who are entrepreneurs or people who put themselves on camera and do that kind of stuff, they tend to be rank higher in narcissism than other people. Not a bad thing. It's actually essential. You, In order to put yourself out there and take risks, you kind of have you to believe. believe in yourself. Yeah, you got to believe in yourself. And that's there's a healthy amount of that. But when that goes awry and you combine that with your charisma, then shit goes goes haywire and it goes crazy. I, I think a lot of times these people and part of why they have so much success and actually gain this much power is I, I, I like to think. Uh, we give it to them, by the way. Well, I, I think I think their intentions are pure from the start. I think it's the, I think it's just the power of the ego and, and keep what, getting fed. Yeah, yeah. We, we were talking about this with the whole Chuck Berry thing. Is like you know <laughs> that it's like how does someone get to that level where you start doing shit where you piss on somebody and fart <laughs> in their face and you do weird <laughs> do weird shit and it's like I, you I don't just think got Chuck Berry. I don't think he did that to the first first girl that he had sex with. I think that. He's had, he had hundreds, maybe thousands, and you just your ego inflates so much that you start pushing boundaries and doing things. I would think a guy like this, because when you watch the documentary, I, I feel like his intentions and his teachings and how it changed his life yeah. and that, hey, he wanted to go around the world and share this with everybody yeah. else. I believe it's pure, but then that's the power of of the ego is that it gets fed so much you start smelling becomes, your own farts. Become, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Or making other people do I like it. that yeah. loop there. Yeah, that you yeah, like that? yeah it, becomes, uh, it becomes uh, poisonous. It starts to poison you. This is why when you look at like politics and leaders of the world, um, you know, you want a leader that's extremely competent, that believes in themselves, that has good intentions. But then there's this alternate side that kind of self-selects a bunch of crazy, uh, dishonest shit fucks, right? Which is... The very people who desire to lead, who desire to be in charge, are probably the very people you don't want yeah. to put in charge. Like Usually the case. Yeah, why do you want to be the one in so badly? Why do you identify so strongly with that? Mm -hmm. And that means you probably have a they're very vulnerable to your own ego and narcissism. It's almost like like George Washington, you know, we we gave him the king. When he won Could the revolution, they told him that they tried yeah. to make him king because he led the you know the the military to win the revolutionary war. He turned it down. That's a great leader. Yeah. That's but most people. Do you think that they would? You think most presidents? Right. If they said he could have all the power, forget Congress, oh forget everybody else, and making this a democracy, a scary you get thought. all the power. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. Hundred like, percent. Trump would take. Oh that. yeah. Imagine oh, if. Yeah. Imagine if Trump king was. Me. Imagine if he was so popular that everybody voted and we say yeah. we want you to be king forever. You think he'd be like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. That's against the con. He'd be like, absolutely, I'll do that. No problem. Everybody yeah. says I should, therefore I should. I'm chosen by God. Don't or whatever. agree. You executed. It's crazy. So when I watch stuff like that, it's because then you hear the girls talking in that documentary who he actually abused, but they still talk about him like he's like a god. I right? know. It's like, what is going still on? Still waiting for his comeback. It's Drank crazy. way too much of the Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah that's anyway, unreal. Anyway, talking about crazy uh, stuff, um, have you guys seen, have you guys heard of <laughs> perineum or also known as butthole sunning? Have you guys heard of this? Wow. Oh, that was the thing you shared More in the forum. More great content. 
There's people. I saw you share that in the. I form. thought that was a joke. Like it was a meme at first. Like because I saw somebody in like this this baby pose thing where they're grabbing their toes and then like their butt was pointing the sun. No, let me read to you what some of these influencers. These are fitness and health influencers, by the way. And I hate the fact that people call them. Are these like fitness the, and the same like breathitarian kind of people? Uh, like, I, I I here's what I'll tell you what related I think somehow. Say. But here's some of the quotes: In a mere thirty seconds of sunlight on your butthole. You will receive more energy from this electric node than you would in an entire day so, being outside <laughs> with your clothes on, <laughs> says an influencer who goes by the by the name Raw of Earth. By the way, if someone ever comes up to you and you say, hey, what's your name, My dude? Name and he's like, Raw. Raw of Earth. <laughs> Probably not the guy. <laughs> totally someone I want to hang out with. Yeah. 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 should be friends. Yeah, yeah dude. You, you sound know, like a motivated guy. You know what this sounds like to me? So there are some, there are some ancient you know, practices that talk about something like this. But you know what I think Are there? Is? Yeah, maybe. But you know what I well, think? Well, there's, there's, I, I, I feel like there's a little bit of so logic here. Like charging you have an area that is that uh, never gets the sun, right? That gets never gets the sun, so it's extremely sensitive to it. So it probably uh, uptakes and absorbs at a faster rate than other places on your skin. So the initial probably surge of whatever benefits that you would get from the sun from exposure on the rest of your body maybe is compounded th for th the first few times you do it. I think it would it. give you negligible effects well, from what you're saying but here's what I but think but I think that's that's where you that's where the I mean that what this is science for you this is what we do in our space all the time we find something that gives a we little a bit stretch. yeah we stretch the shit out of it we find something I mean we see this in the supplement industry all the time it's like oh take this and this and this is going to in, improve recovery well how much zero. is that yeah is it going to improve here's no my, not zero one percent not you know? even yeah, and I, so, oh son won't you come yeah that's what it was for. Yeah. so here's my uh, my scientific uh, I'll, I'll go with science also okay did humans evolve to have lots of sun exposure on their butthole no the butthole is deep in your butt cheeks. <laughs> no, if you were a caveman and you're laying back and spreading your butt to get sunlight, very quickly you would be mounted by another cave person. <laughs> yeah. There plus, is, plus all the bugs. You know what I mean? Nah, like, you know what I think it is? Uh, I think it's... I'm it's, exposing my butt to the I think bugs. it's fitness influencers. I'm doing the quote here because they're not really fitness influencers. But I think it's fitness influencers who really want to come up with a, an excuse to lay to naked, get naked in, the sun. In, in nature, and to lay. We've already seen this. I mean, they're yeah. doing this all over the place anyway. That's like the new. That's the new thing right now. Period. Is just <laughs> the, the nudity on <laughs> on. Uh, yeah, you want to you be. We're you want to be naked. You want to spread your butt cheeks dudes. in nature. Just fucking do it. Yeah, Don't make right. up some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like this is good for my health. That's why I'm doing. It. No, you want everybody to see your butthole. Like, don't be. <laughs> Don't be so stupid. Yeah, it's not sugarcoat this. Anyway, here's some more uh, interesting stuff. So I just uh, saw this article. I thought it was really interesting. So in Russia, in a bid to get more and better milk out of their cows, Russian farmers have strapped VR headsets onto the cows. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're lying to me right like, now. Like putting them on a beach. Swear to God. Yeah. And so in to the, like relax them and so yes. Oh wow. Now this okay, this makes a lot of sense to, for a guy who's been milking cows for a portion of his life. Like you know when uh, That's right, you're the cow expert on So yeah, when here we go. Wait, when when it's just like anything else though. Like uh when you get the 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 maximum results from the cow as far as the amount of milk. And it, let me tell you it varies. Like so you have the exact type of breed of cow, similar in size, and I can milk one and he could produce me Three and a half. She. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. She. Did I say he? A little fruity, yeah, yeah, little fruity yeah, and slippery yeah, around him. I can milk, <laughs> milk I can, all them, dude. I can, you don't dude sound cows. like an expert right now. I can. I say him. Did I really you say do? it? Yeah. 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 I can milk her and get three and a half gallons mm, real relaxed. of milk. <laughs> and then uh, the next one comes in and she could produce two. So a gallon yeah. and a half of milk, one cow, you multiply that by hundreds, thousands That's of cows. Lot. That's a big difference. And so there's things that, there's techniques you do to relax a cow. They come in and I would talk to them and pet them. You you, you dip iodine on their udders and that relaxes them and it releases a hormone and they, the milk drops down. So the more comfortable, we had, I played certain music inside the, the barn that was more therapeutic and relaxing than something that's like hard rock and roll like so you do things like that and because i would be tracking milk the the amount that we produce and, and you we, love numbers so much i, I can, like i can I, just picture it yes <laughs> so how you how you they fed them how much you did, all those things started match so i'm not surprised that somebody thought of this that hey what is the most ultimate way we can probably put these cows in a, a relaxed state and let's put some vr 
Because they do, you know, like they put horse blinders on horses to yeah. not scare them and stress them out, right? Makes so, sense, huh? Yeah. No, no, it makes it total make sense. sense. It's so funny to me because these poor these cows are like in an alternate universe. Like, this is <laughs> wonderful. Oh, you know, oh I, what God. I want to know is yeah. what they're watching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like yeah. cow porn? Yeah. <laughs> what, do they, what do they get? That'll only, that only work if you milk the male cow like you were talking about. Like what do they get? Like yeah. they, they, see, they, they see another cow getting like massaged or something like crazy. They're Isn't like, that oh. insane? That's yeah. fascinating. That's so crazy. That so, is so fast. Uh, now I wonder if it's like damaging to the eyes or anything like that. I don't know. Oh, you know that's a good. That's a, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I was reading more about uh, blue light um, and its effect on uh, the eyes. Um, do you know that they're projecting that age-related macular degeneration is going to increase dramatically because of you know because of technology because of our exposure to blue light? So I, I was reading this thing. This is researched by the Uni- University of Toledo. They've Again, this is another uh, another university that has a study on this. Has revealed that prolonged exposure to blue light triggers poisonous molecules to be generated in the eye's light-sensitive cells that can cause macular degeneration. So they're saying uh, we're being continuously exposed to blue light, uh, you know, in our new environments, and they expect this type of age-related blindness to accelerate big time. Yeah. So as the generations now that are on computers and because it really, you know, we're talking about two decades, relatively recent, right? two decades at most. I mean, just two decades ago, kids did not have iPhones. Okay? Mm-hmm. They didn't have little computer screens. They were, and we're not talking about little like computers that we looked at when we were kids that were green, you know what I'm saying? And that was all the color you had or black and white. Like, Good point. Like yeah. you have these vibrant LED bright, super light, high definition lights that these kids are staring at, you know, and some of them, and and mind you, this is not, uh, I don't want to sound like fear mongling, right? I I don't think that, you know, you watch your favorite TV show every night. I don't think you're going to go blind because of that. But if you work on a computer all day, but yeah, there's definitely people that I would be concerned about if you're somebody who already is letting your kids do it for hours on hours regularly on uh, during the day. They end up going to school, using computers all day long. Then they go into a job where they're going to sit for eight hours to 10 and hours. And they're doing this for decades. Yeah, and you do it for a long time. To think that that wouldn't affect us... Uh, and to think it wouldn't affect us negatively to me is is silly. Especially almost. now mm-hmm. that we have all the research that that literally supports it. You know, I think this is what. So my kids know now. They know now when they're going to go on their computers uh, that they got to put on their their Felix Ray glasses. That's yeah. like just and it sits on like my son. It sits on his desk. There's his computer. I don't have to tell him anymore. Now it's part of his practice. I think we're very close to companies just like wearing a, a hard hat or wearing any other safety. Yeah. You know, or a seat belt in your car. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a part of your job. I, I, You're going to show up at you work. You know what? That's such a on. that's such a good analogy too, because it's not like every day someone goes to a construction job and a, a two by four drops on their head and they die. No. Right. It's but it's just good practice. Good practice yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like why not? Why would you not measures. do that if you are potentially putting yourself in harm's way on a regular basis like that? I think blue light blocking glasses, especially the kind that don't change the color of what you're looking at, mm-hmm. uh, like the ones that Felix Ray makes, I think that they're going to explode because of the awareness they that's already, happening. They already are. They're, I mean, they. I know they're Oh, I think they're going to be partnered like, up with Google and Apple. And really? These, yeah, these companies, they know. And, and and that's why they have the insurance thing yeah. where you, if you have the uh, or what's it called the, the what's it called Doug the FCF uh, what's the to, FCC? health savings account yeah the health savings account that most people have that you can use that towards things like that and companies like Apple they Google, yeah they know oh, that's crazy so I think it's going to become uh, standard for anybody that works on a computer all day long you wow, know, if that's you're cool. if you're on a computer all day long I think it'll just become that it's it'll be the norm mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. oh dude another cool article that I read uh recently I didn't know this did you know that there there were nine sp- different species of humans that existed on earth right around the same time really thousands of years ago I nine wonder, different if there was nine different species i wonder how many different genders there would be then just so, home, uh, yeah well let's not go there well, thanks adam yeah. <laughs> we're trying so to get yeah topic. what are you trying to do man uh, well how many are we at right now yeah i don't know what's it's the infinite. latest i think they say infinite. i stopped counting yeah, oh it's um, infinite now two sexes but an infinite amount of uh, of genders is what some people say. Right. yeah but anyway um, so back to the uh, the article um, so you know about Neanderthals, so that's one different species. There were also de- uh, Denisovans um, and other species that we've identified, and they all existed around the same time. We know that there's lots of Neanderthal DNA in lots of Europe, you know, in, in European people. 
Uh, East Asians, Polynesians, and Australians have DNA from Denisovans. There's DNA from another species uh, that occurs in many Asian people. Um, and then there's uh, African genomes show traces of DNA from another archaic human species. Now, what's crazy about this, and here's the theory, because it's like, where did they all where they all go? What happened to all these human species? And the evidence didn't they interbreed? There was in, there was interbreeding, but and there's evidence to show that they were also intelligent. Like Neanderthals were also intelligent, just like the you know us, the species that that survived. But we outcompeted them and probably killed the fuck out of them all. Yeah. All of them. And it was because of our ingenuity, our ability to work together, and our superior weaponry. Mm. So Neanderthals probably couldn't, for example, throw with as effective accuracy as we could. So we're this species of humans that has just had superior weapons. And, you know, humans are just... We, Survival we, the fittest. That's yeah. right. And we've, we've, <laughs> we fucked them and then we killed them all. So nine, you said nine different species? Nine because is what they've identified. It's interesting. I, I remember when it came out that there was like a, like a hobbit type that's one of them yeah like like species that they had found and that was like a really interesting because uh like i always think lord of the rings tried to depict all these types of different species oh, of human yeah. beings and that was like their thing but. how cool would it be to i mean it would be so awesome to be able to to have one of these other species because they were probably very intelligent like we are maybe different but how interesting that would be to to, to be uh, able to talk you, with them and see. Do what you they're... really think so? I think it's the opposite of that. I think they weren't because then that's why they didn't survive. Well, the evidence that we have uh, currently shows that they were intelligent. Like Neanderthals, we have the most evidence uh, versus all the other species shows that they had. They did have weapons. That they did mm. um, have complex societies. Um, that they did have art. There's evidence of religion. So, for all intents and purposes. Def definitely more intelligent than uh, other animals that we have now on Earth, like yeah. other chimpanzees and, and dolphins and stuff like that. Like these were human species were probably far more intelligent. We just probably were better at you know conducting war or whatever you know or out competing them, and so we fucking killed them all off. How crazy is that? I don't know that we had DNA from all these. I knew Neanderthal. Yeah. DNA, but well, I remember too uh, the Bering Strait. You know, th there was this whole like uh, population of. Pu uh, I guess I don't know if it was an interbreeding of Neanderthal and Homo sapien, but there was something like that in that area region that was unique, uh, that was its own species. And then they came across, and they they uh, think that they were probably the very first like Americans in terms of like them wow. coming down to South America and everything. Wow, I, that's so cool! I, it would be really cool to be able to see what they look like and how they lived or whatever. It's too it's too long ago though. Oh hmm. uh, yeah. All right, first question is from Expect Vitality. How many seconds is too long to rest between reps to try to get a few more out? When should you just move on to your break before your next set? I, I like this question because... Uh, yeah, because it's a traditional answer, but then there's also other ways of spacing reps out. Yeah, and, and there's not like a, a, a wrong or always right uh, answer to this. And the way I make this decision is kind of based off of what current adaptation I'm chasing or what was the current goal that I, I want to achieve. Like, for example, if I'm in the middle of like a maps aesthetic and it's bodybuilding and I'm in phase three, which is hypertrophy type focus, meaning I'm chasing the pump and I'm doing high reps. Um, I'm going to always lean towards shorter or shorter rest periods. And it's not a big deal. If I can't squeeze out as many reps, it's not as big of a deal. If I can't lift a little bit more weight, because that's not the main focus of that phase. And this is, we talked about this in an, an earlier episode of learning how to change your goals, right? Like, and, and, and part of changing your goal isn't just, okay, my goal is to, you know, build some muscle right now. It's also like, what, how would you build the program around that? And how would you, you're focused your training. And so when you're focused on, you know, hypertrophy, building muscle and chasing the pump, which is high reps, low rest periods. I'm not really worried about squeezing, you know, giving myself longer rest to squeeze out a couple more reps or, or potentially lift more weight because that's not the main goal. But if I am doing something like uh, what I'm in right now, which is running maps power lift, and the goal is, you know, I want to see my w uh, strength go up and increase every single time. So I'm going to lean on giving myself a little extra rest 
because I do care that every time I get under that bar, I'm hoping it's one of the best lifts I, I've had and I, I'm able to lift more weight or well, more weight more times because that's the main focus well, of that. Well, now the now you're talking about sets. The question is asking about reps. reps. No, no, yeah, same the same same thing. Same same application. Yeah, now, same application. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's reps, it's sets, it's the the goal and then because the goal is not centered around like this person's that that's a that's a strength goal, right? To give yourself more more rest so you can get out more reps. That's you're trying to increase strength there, yeah. and, and there are cl what are called cluster, you know, cluster sets where you're doing as many reps as you can, and then you wait ten or fifteen seconds, and then do another keep going. x amount of reps, and then wait another 10, 15 seconds, do another x amount of reps. Uh, now the traditional uh, thing between reps is that as soon as you complete one rep, maybe a second or two, and then you move into the next rep. But this can vary, um, and kind of on the back of what Adam was talking about, you know, when I'm trying to get a pump, I don't do a rep pause for a second, do a rep, pause for a second. I go rep, 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 rep. There's very little pause. I'm trying to squeeze as much blood in the muscle and get that pump. Now, when I'm lifting heavy and I'm doing four reps, like I say, I'm doing a squat, it's like one rep and then I sit at the top of the squat, mm -hmm. catch a couple breaths yeah. and then go back down. So it is a longer, it, it's, and it follows a similar model to what sets, you know, your rest yeah, of sets Yeah, I just pay be. attention to composure, you know, and like how that's affecting the quality of, of each one of the reps. If I'm like very much focused, like you said, in, in a power lifter, like a, a strength phase, like that is my ultimate, like... <laughs> Uh, attention in terms of like what if I'm at the top of the rep I just completed a rep I need to go into another rep but you know I, I'm feeling fatigue set on I could take a few extra breaths and, and take a second and then drop back in you know I'll do that like because mm -hmm. that's that's I want to make sure like quality is, is top of mind mm -hmm. but you know if I am getting into like sort of a superset situation uh, you know you know my goals might be a little different because I'm dealing with a little less load so therefore you know at that point I'm like I'm more fighting the burn. Yeah. Now the now the longest rest between reps that you're going to experience is when your goal is power, not strength. I'm talking about explosive power. So if I'm doing, and which is funny because when people, when I see most people in the gym doing explosive movements, they do the exact opposite. Right. So let's say I'm doing uh, jump um, boxes. Yeah. Let's say I'm jumping on a box. So I'm working on explosive power. The way I'm supposed to do it is I explode up onto the box. I step down and I wait. Yes. Even though I'm doing five reps, I wait, gain composure, and then exert as much power again. The funny thing is with power movements, one of the main reasons why people do them wrong, besides the fact that they do them until they can't do them anymore, which is wrong, is they go jump, 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 and they treat it like jump rope or something like that. Yeah, now and now it becomes an endurance-based training. Totally. When you, yeah. when you know what your goal is... That's why you should start with the goal. Yeah, and that's what I meant well, by That's where I was degrades. going with that that point that I was trying to make. Is yeah. like it really did, there's not a wrong or right answer. It doesn't mean that somebody can't give longer or shorter rest periods uh, with this example. It just means that understand what the main goal or adaptation is. If you're training for strength or and or power, that type of training gaining composure between each rep is completely fine because you're wanting to give your most in each one of those reps. Where if you're doing 12, 15 reps and you're trying to chase a pump and you're supersetting, then it doesn't really matter if you fatigue early or you don't get as many reps out or the weight's lighter because it's not a strength or power type of adaptation. You're just trying to chase a pump and get more reps in. Next question is from Curtis Blank. Are drop set sets useful for the beginning or intermediate lifter? And if so, what's the best way to use them? Okay, so a drop set, for people who don't know what that is, it's a, it's an advanced technique. What program did we include that in? Uh, I, we split? did that uh, map split, maps, PD, um, uh, PD, PD yes, and I think two. aesthetic, we might have put one or two in there also. I know in, in, in Possibly. map strong, there's something that resembles a... A drop set. So we have a handful. To we have a lot of, yeah, a lot of, it's a good thing they're all 50% off. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> a shameless plug. Boom. It is a good no, thing. So, um, so here's the deal. So here's a drop set. A drop set is I do as many reps as I can with the weight, and then I immediately move to a lighter weight and do as many as I can with that weight, and then I immediately move again to a lighter, rate, uh, lighter weight and then do as many as I can. So it's called a drop set, also known as a strip set. Now, it's an advanced technique. There is some value to it, to it, but very little value to the beginner yeah. or the intermediate lifter. Now, I'm not saying that they're not going to gain some value. There's always exceptions to the rule. But for the most part, if you're a beginner or intermediate, you should leave all these advanced techniques for when you're advanced because you're going to gain so much more 
from perfecting your technique, from focusing on traditional strength training and, and staying away from all these other advanced techniques, which really, again, they, they offer a little bit of value, but you should save them for yeah, when you're you got to look at it more as a novelty. So this yeah. is, this, this kind of goes, you know, back to how long have you been in the game? Like, like what's, what are you going to like? What is your body going to respond to if you stop responding to like normal phases and techniques that, uh, you know, are the foundational type techniques and, and, you know, you need a few more variables to mix it up. Like this is a great interrupter in your program to then, you know, shock your body to start responding again uh, by doing a totally new stimulus. So and that's how we've programmed it intermittently into some of our programs is it's to, we show you how to intermittently introduce it. But honestly, when I. It, the way I use something like this is uh, dictated by time um, because it's rare that I don't have a whole hour or hour and a half that I've slotted for myself to work out. But it does occasionally happen where today is I've only got 30 minutes to work out. And, and hey, I haven't done drop sets in six months. What a great time mm -hmm. to incorporate something because I can I can get a pump. I can get a good workout in a shorter period of time because I'm doing movements like this where I I'm you know doing reps, not resting, doing more reps, and and then I can get out. And so the, to me, that's how I teach tools like this, like a, one similar to this, or things like hit. Like does how often do I hit train? Very rarely do I hit train. Does I, is there not great value? In it? Is there not a bunch of uh, science and studies that prove that it's valuable and beneficial? Sure. But I find the most benefit is to use it when I need it the most. When it is when I'm limited on time, that's when a 26 minute workout has got a lot of value to me. When I've got an hour, hour and a half to work out, traditional straight sets and foundational type movements and compound lifts and your traditional type of programming is going to be extremely beneficial and ideal for most people, including your even advanced people. Now, because drop sets and strip sets are fatigue-based, there are certain exercises that are more appropriate for this kind of training. Typically, single joint isolation exercises tend to be awesome when it comes to drop sets or, or, or strip sets. Compound movements or complex movements, you can do drop sets and strip sets with them, but they're not as appropriate because as you fatigue, form starts to break down. And if you're doing a complex movement like a squat, uh, your odds of hurting yourself go up dramatically. But if it's like a barbell curl or a side lateral or a tricep press down or a leg extension, um, your form is off a little bit. You're fine. So I tend to only ever recommend drop or strip sets for isolation type movements unless specified for a particular type of goal. So if you want to start to incorporate this, I would say start with and stick to isolation movements and stay away from the complex movements when doing this. Next question is from Mr. Rota. What do you consider an overall healthy individual? What makes for good balance? Well, that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. That's going to be different, um, mm -hmm. you know, from time to time, you know, like and from person to person. I think that there's, I think you say really well when you say things like there's, there's some general truths, but then there's going to be a, a large uh, variance in between individuals, right? Right, like uh, some some people probably uh, need more in the relationship aspect of their life, and so therefore they're healthier if they if they pursue more mm -hmm. of that because they need more of that. Some other people need something like yoga or something meditative because they have a, a super stressful job. And so they need something like that to help balance them out and make them more healthy and balanced. And so there isn't like a straight formula that we, I could give as a trainer that says, you know, somebody who trains four days a week in the weights, two days of yoga and, you know, spends five hours with their family a week is what I would consider a healthy mm -hmm. person. It's like, that that dose of of exercise, family, meditation is going to be dependent on the the person, their levels of stress, their levels of need in all those areas. But I do think that the things that we talk about on this show, with you know, spiritual health, mental health, physical health, you know, all these things, nutritional health, like uh, uh, all those things are important. Even monetary health, right? How yeah. you handle your money, right. and Your relationship with money, right? Great point. Yeah, and I th I'll tell you what. Uh, I think a lot of times people think balance is being like a 33% here, 33%, 33% here. So now mm -hmm. it's all balanced. No, life doesn't work that way. And and I'll, I'll tell you something. If you get too obsessed with balance, you'll actually become imbalanced with yeah. your obsession with balance. 
because there are real benefits to sometimes being obsessed and hyper-focused. Now, you got to utilize it appropriately, but let's say you start a new business and you want that business to succeed. You're going to have to have a certain level of obsession and dedication to what you're trying to do in order to accomplish particular goals. Now, if that obsession is, stays with you for the rest of your life, it probably is going to be very imbalanced. Let's say you have a new baby. You got a new baby in your life. A lot of your time is going to be dedicated to that baby. Does that mean you're imbalanced? Well, if it becomes the rest of your life, perhaps. But in that moment, I think there's a lot of value to that. So this is a very difficult question to ask, to answer. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, I think the I think overall, are you do you have a life that's full of meaning and purpose? Um, are you overly obsessed? Uh, do you feel fulfilled? You know, those answers answers to those things will probably yeah. tell you if your balance is I okay. I think I think too, I think there's moments where you feel like you know, you you're you're hitting your stride. Like like there's there's just there's moments of clarity that like things are working out a specific way because you know, like maybe the, all these things combined, all these variables in your life that you wake up and you're trying to be your best all the time. Like all of a sudden you're, you're, you're hitting all those buttons, but then it goes away. That's the beauty of life. You don't get that very often. And I, and I don't think that, you know, people can, can maintain like the quote unquote balanced everything, you know, for, for very long. And so it's really up to just constantly striving to have that, that open growth minded, you know, mentality towards you know all these components of your life that you know relationships you know spiritual health uh you know nutrition like you know relations all these things like let, let's let's try our best every day well i i think you know in order for you to find good balance you first have to understand where you're personally out of balance so if you're somebody who already doesn't you you're the like katrina is a good example that's opposite of me in this scenario where she has better balance than i have in this right so she talks to her mom almost every day she sees her siblings uh, on a weekly basis there's a lot of love and communication and support amongst them and she she has a very solid foundation in her her relationships especially with those that she loves i come from a family that is really disconnected and that's an area that I'm out of balance. And so I have to put things in place to help create better habits because I know how important that is to my health. I know that's and my relationships with those that I love. It's not that I love my siblings less than she does. It's just I haven't put those things in practice. And so that's something that I need to put in there to make my life healthier and more balanced. She doesn't need that so much. The same thing goes for somebody who's extremely sedentary. If you're somebody who you know, sits in your car, drives to work, sits at a desk all day long, doesn't move at all, that person probably needs to create more things in their life that is active, working, hiking, exercising, versus somebody who gets up at five o'clock in the morning, works a construction job, and is very, uh, you know, physical and laborious all day long, that person probably doesn't have to put as much focus on movement and moving around. So it's you first have to be able to assess your own life, understand all the things from like what and, even, and we I could go to each one of these things like monetary and you know are you somebody that blows all of your money uh, every as soon as you get it before you get a paycheck or are you somebody who saves and hoards everything and never enjoys any of your money like so learning where am I out of balance on all these things that contribute to my overall health. And then how do I get balanced? Well, I, I put practices in place mm -hmm. to help counter where I'm out of balance. And I think I think you all on top of that, you should also be okay with uh, life yeah. throwing you out of balance. Right, like right. You gotta be flexible. Yeah, you could be so obsessed with balance that you know something happens in your life again, like you have a new baby. Yeah. Like, but I got to get my hour workout. I got to yeah. get all my perfect meals. I got to get all my meditation. I got to just but now throws this, all those routines out the window. And now I'm so stressed out because I can't be balanced. You know, so um, you know, yeah, it's it's a very individual thing, and I think it's a it's constantly changing for you as your life changes. Yeah, and I changing. still like looking. I remember Doctor Andy Galpin was talking about optimal optimizing and adapting and then finding homeostasis. I just think it's that's part of the game is just always kind of finding what homeostasis is for you. So finding your flaws and like really trying to improve that. And then you adapt towards that. And then you need to optimize. You need to go out and stretch yourself a little bit more on top of that. Next question is from Tanner Whitman 
What is your opinion on yoga and how do you suggest implementing it into your training? I, I think I, I would say that you, of all the group type exercise or fitness health modalities. It's the only one I don't want to see die. Yeah, it's the best one by yeah. far. I think yoga done properly. So we're going to assume that I'm talking about proper yoga because yoga can be done wrong or applied wrong, just like anything. But done properly, yoga has tremendous benefit. One of the benefits that yoga provides, uh, especially like a vinyasa flow type class, um, and there's other forms of yoga that are more appropriate for certain individuals. For someone like me who's really, really tight, um, a yin yoga is really, really good. But for most people, vinyasa flow type classes are phenomenal. And the reason why they're so good is when you do yoga properly, you are in positions that encourage you to stretch certain muscles. You are in positions where you're feeling things stretch, but you're active in these poses. Mm -hmm. uh, when I Before I did yoga, I thought yoga was stretching and I thought a lot of it was just passive. It's not true. When you get into a pose like Warrior One and you're feeling stretches and stretching in, in your in your groin or you're doing you know uh, you know up dog or other types of uh, positions, you don't just passively get in the stretch. No. They teach you to uh, to to tense your body to be active and you need to lean into and it. And I'll yeah. tell you something right now: the best uh, the best instructors I've ever seen in my entire life for giving you cues. Like if you're a personal trainer. One of the one of the things that'll separate you from other trainers is how well you cue your clients so that they know what you're trying to communicate. Because oftentimes it's difficult to tell someone to, hey, activate this, activate. They don't know the fuck you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Go to a yoga class with a good yoga instructor. They have the best cues you've ever heard in your entire life. Like you know, uh, you know, press through your heart. It's such a weird cue, but I know exactly what that means. Um, they have some of the best cues. That's the other value. And then lastly. Um, the recuperative meditative benefit um, from yoga in a group type environment. Like my dad, for example, um, he did yoga uh, 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 for a little while because I had a class, I had a group uh, studio that was that had yoga classes. My dad will never meditate. I couldn't get him to meditate. I could pay him. He'll never do anything like that. But he did it because it was part of a yoga class without realizing any gained value. So for those things, I would say if you're going to pick a group type class to add to your resistance training routine, make it yoga for now, sure. Now I'm going to challenge that. And, and I, I do agree with you, um, on the benefits. And I do agree that of, of all the class settings that are out there, uh, this is the one that I think is probably one of the most beneficial for most people. Now, that being said, you listen to mind pump, uh, and we have a program called Maps Prime and Prime Pro, which sh shameless plug again, like sell it, everything's half off right now. A yoga class alone is normally $20 to $30 per class or $150 for a monthly membership to go to unlimited classes every single month. You could spend half that money on Prime and Prime Pro, assess yourself and find out the areas where you have dysfunction or you need to work on your joints because that's what the, the programs are designed to do and then learn specific movements that are going to address your problems, your imbalances. It's individualized. And, yeah. and now instead of going to a yoga class for an hour every single day or every other day, you spend that time on the, these three to five movements that are benefiting the shit out of you specifically and in that time, and you make that time for yourself, whether that's, you know, down in your, your your basement or in your living room when it's quiet and you're alone and you can be by yourself and spend 30 minutes an hour or even better, you take a couple of those movements and you only spend five or 10 minutes, three, four or five times a day, and you're going to get way more value. Dude, you just reminded me, um, I've had th at least three or four messages from yoga instructors who are using some of the movements that we put in uh, in Maps Prime Pro? Oh, cool! Um, and Prime, because when you think of a yoga class, and the yoga instructor has a certain, typically a certain level of flexibility, and I don't mean that in terms of physical flexibility, no, no pun intended. I mm -hmm. mean in terms of what they can do in the class. Some yoga instructors at the end of the class will read a, a an excerpt from a book or some spiritual practice. Some yoga instructors are much more you know, coming around adjusting you. Others are more instructing, instructing from the top. Some of them add a strength component or whatever. Well, these yoga instructors messaged me and said, you know, at the beginning of the class, before we go into the flow, I have them do 
these three priming movements oh, I love uh, before they go into the class. I love that. Or I'll have them do it at the end, um, which I now, think those is are, those phenomenal. Are, those are incredible teachers. They mm-hmm. are. And here's the thing about yoga that I like so much, um, and that in terms of instructors, they seem to be the most, uh, in my experience, okay, they seem to be the most open to the benefits of other modalities. Now, there's a certain level of tri- tribalism that comes from any type of exercise where everybody, they think it's the only way and it's the best way or whatever. But I've, you know, uh, the yoga instructors that I've met and worked with, they're all very like, oh no, you need to have a strength training component and you need to, and I like that. And I think it's the yoga model or the general attitude of yoga, which is like when you go to a, a group class, that's any other group class, they don't say this at the beginning of the class. This is your practice. This is for your body. If a movement doesn't feel good, slow down, move out of it, or or go into this other pose and rest and skip these. Yoga classes do that. They have a very, they really do acknowledge better than other group classes, the individual variants. They seem to be more open-minded. Um, in general, I'd say yoga is uh, is excellent. But I thought that was phenomenal when, when I got those messages. I was like, what well, a great yeah. class. And I, and I think like someone like your dad, you know, and my mom is someone like this. I, I mean, and so if this person who's asking this question is like my mom or like your dad, who, guess what? I have Prime and Prime Pro. My mom hasn't gone through it. She hasn't figured out the moves that are perfect for her. And so it'd be much easier for me just to say, go to the goddamn yoga class, follow what the teacher says, and you and she doesn't have to think about anything. Sure. But if you're asking me what I think is the most beneficial or how great, I mean, if you, and you listen to Mind Pump, I would tell you, spend the money on Prime and Prime Pro, spend the time, which would be less than an hour, going through it to, to learn what, where you're deficient and where you should be spending time in, and then you know hone in on three to five yeah. exercises that are incredibly beneficial for you and treat it like a yoga class where you do it three to five times a week totally. or more, and you'll get way more benefit. I like it because it's probably the, the only popular modality out there that really kind of brings slows it down and brings it back to the intent and, and to really yes. focus in on, you know, how your body is, you know, receiving this information and then outputting that information and, and commanding, uh, you know, your body to, to, to do what, what, what you're asking of it. And, uh, I think that like going through and researching all about like isometrics and, um, you know, really like finding so much hidden value there that shouldn't be hidden it's just not popular because like it's difficult and it's it's difficult for people in general just to sit by themselves in silent and listen to their own thoughts like people hate that true and so it it addresses like so many of these things which is very restorative which is very important in contrast with you know the aggressive like intense oh modern life yeah everything that you're battling constantly so uh, you know, I, I totally applaud yoga for that. I do 100% agree, though. It could be even more refined and be more individual. And this is these are things that we wanted to attack because it's this is what's important. And, and uh, you know, let's get rid of the sexy shit. Let, let's figure this out and then, you know, come back to, uh, you know, to all this other stuff that, that everybody hypes on Instagram. Excellent. All right. So uh, if you're listening to this episode when it, it's been released... You have a few hours to take advantage of our Black Friday sale. Uh, n- by far, the biggest sale we have all year long. It's a very, very short period of time. Um, so again, if you're listening to this episode on release, you have like a few hours. So here's the deal. Right now, we're offering 50% off all MAPS programs, except for MAPS Powerlift. But every other program, including Prime and Prime Pro and Anabolic and Aesthetic and Strong and Performance, everything, 50% off. Also, our guides and mods, 50% off. There's no limit to the amount of programs, guides, and mods you can get. You can go back and you can go back and continue to get programs all at 50% off. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code BLACKFRIDAY50. So that's B-L-A-C-K-F-R-I-D-A-Y-5-0, no space. Now, that's not all. We're also offering 25% off all of our bundles. So bundles are already over 30% off retail. And bundles are where we take multiple programs and we put them together. And we put bundles together for specific goals. So if you're a hard gainer and you want to build lots of muscle, we have a hard gainer bundle. Uh, We have a bundle that's for the full year, um, which is the super bundle. We have the business person bundle, which is great for people who travel a lot, who want to maintain their fitness. 
and more. You get an additional 25% off those. The code for that is BF Bundles. And again, you can find that at mapsfitnessproducts.com.